Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ingus and I'm from IGS Electronics and today we're going to be covering a uh, VEG uh, CF, what's it called? CFW 500 series drive, which one is by the way the higher end of the drive of the CFW family, there's a 300 and there's a 100, we, both, we are going to be covering both of them in the near future. So as usual we're going to be making a three part video where we're going to be commissioning a drive and running a local run in the first video and the second video is going to be a ER23Y controls, <coughs> exploring a bit more parameters and uh, also we'll be using potentiometer and in the third video we're going to be going, going deeper with another form of control which is a MLP which is two, uh, two button speed control plus minus speed control and also we'll be working on a uh, setting up the drive to run in a multi-frequency so uh, all the manuals and uh, related videos and anything else that I find it might benefit you in any possible way will be in description below and that drive particularly right down there will be available on my website or eBay store if you wish to get one so other than that Let's get started. Here we are, all set wired in. And as usual, we're going to go through the front keypad, uh, terminals, and pretty much explaining a bit more about drive, what, what is there, what is not there. And the first thing uh, you are going to need, because this is the CFW500 series, all their front uh, terminals, uh, front like control terminals are switchable pretty much not switchable uh, like um, uh, replaceable or customizable and they come in several different ways and the one we're going to be using it looks pretty much like that so it's just it's sort of a this is the basic unit and there's several of these it comes with a can with the usb with the ethernet with the rs45 and this is it's, it's, it's many of these are coming with uh, even extended ios if you wish and uh, so yeah, so we are going to be using today the very basic one. So uh, th this is the first entry one, and pretty much most of most of the people will be having this. And uh, and then just you just plug it in, and pretty much that's how it's going to be looking at when it is done. So uh, obviously the front keypad, uh, we're going to get to that in a minute. And and then here we got a uh, this is where the line will go in neutral will go in but they did lift the screw in an L3 in which is quite an interesting usually other manufacturers take that out so people don't tend to put anything in there but looks like they have left it in there which is quite interesting and obviously then there's going to be a UVW that goes to your motor. And then we come to this, uh, which I already plugged in, there's a dip switches in there where in a mo mainly they're going to be used as you can see in the card in here. The first dip switch, if you turn it on, will be uh, for the current uh, speed, speed referencing and the second one will be for the voltage. And obviously that's the one we left it on. As default, we're going to be using a, a voltage for our uh, the potentiometer, which we're going to be working on in the next video. And uh, regarding when it comes down to a uh, uh, all these uh, IOs in here, so the 1, 3, 5 and a 7 is going to be our digital inputs. And the 9, in this one, this guy in here, that's a 24 volt uh, so, uh, power there. 11, 13 and 15 is are going to be our digital, uh, what they call digital outputs. And uh, I'll call it as relay outputs, but yeah, they call them like that. But, and uh, obviously then down here in the bottom, it's going to be 2, 4, uh, 6 and 8. Those are going to be used for your referencing. And uh, 10, it's going to be digital output 2, but classes transistor output. And uh, to, uh, 12, uh, 14 for RS485, A and B. And obviously 16 is going to be the last one in here. It's going to be our ground. So that's when it comes down to actual terminals. Next, so let's power up the drive. It is noisy because it's got fan. So that fan is loud. So, uh, so yeah, um, are we quite close? Yeah, we're pretty close. Uh, regarding the buttons, enter, you pretty much, once you enter the menu, you can go and select between the groups you want to enter it. So you can see in a parameter, read, modify, basic, motor, and once, once, it basically it is segregates in the groups with what you want to work with, and then there's all the parameters in there, what you want to place, obviously up and down buttons there to use that. It's sort of it, it's quite nice actually when you put them in a groups like that so it's, it's uh, easier to get to 
But if you don't want to deal with the groups, you can go straight to the parameters, enter, and then you go all the way to 1000. And you can do it like that. So they sort of uh, did a good thing in here, adding these groups. Uh, be in mind, this is a CF uh, W500 uh, series. This is the upper upper end uh, the drive. So probably the other drives will not have these kind of options, but we will definitely be checking that out uh, once we're going to be reviewing them. So yeah, this is pretty much how they segregate in the groups. And then you got the uh, which way you want the drive to spin, not the drive, the motor. Uh, forward, reverse, nice little uh, dial in here and also this is where you select between local and remote I like this option, it's, it's just sort of by default you can jump from one onto another but of, of course you can set that in, a, in a, a parameters that you uh, that those modes can be locked and then there's your jog mode which is already working as you as you click on it because in a local mode there's your start and stop and that's pretty much it when it comes down to actual keypad next we need to perform a factory reset and as of a fact for factory reset, uh, this is, is sort of a, is a little bit called differently in this manual. It's actually called a load the factory the defaults. So it's in a page 53 in the manual, which you're going to find in the description below. So you can, you can see down there it says load VEG 50 hertz or load VEG 50, uh, 60 hertz. And down there you can still have the pre saved uh, loads as well if you wish to. But for, the, for what we want to do to reset the, the drive back to the default, so we need to just load the, for the 50 hertz, 60 hertz or for 50 hertz here. In UK we are 50 and so that's what we're going to do. We need to go to parameter 204. Uh, parameter and then we're going to go to 204. Go for the what we want to load. So in our case it's going to be 6. And there we go, it does its business. Just looks a little graph down there. There we go. Resets the sort of resets the whole thing. And another thing I want to show you as well is if you go, if you leave, uh, enter the menu again, sorry, and then go on. The, you can see the thing called modified in here. This is uh, these are the groups in here. So you can go into. It's quite nice. You go to modified, and in here it's like ABB. I think ABB drive had that as well. Uh, you can see what sort of parameters has been modified and this is just a uh, base frequency down there but you can see there's no parameter has been modified but if we go to back and then we go for those let's say a basic parameter and the first one in here which is going to be our uh, acceleration let's change that all the way to one second and, uh, and the next one as well let's change that to one second as well why not that's for the sound. And once we've done that, now this change will be saved in a uh, modificate, modified uh, section. So you can see down there, it shows you these two parameters has been changed. So in case you want to know what parameters has been changed from default, that will sort of indicate what's been done, which is pretty cool thing. I love this addition when the drives do that, so I can just check it out and what's been changed and what's not been changed from default. Ladies and gentlemen, we have taken the fan out because that thing was far too noisy for a video. So we took it out. So it's, it's, it's on a plug. Quite straightforward and take it out. There is no internal switch to turn it on and off. But for demonstration purposes, that'll be just fine. So the next thing we're going to be doing, we're going to be entering a motor data inside the drive. There's a couple of ways of doing it. And uh, one of them I would have liked to do, but I can't because uh, my motor and uh, inverter drive is far, too much far apart of their uh, ratings because this is 1.1 kilowatt and my motor is 0.18 kilowatt so uh, eh, auto tune is not going to be performing very well for it so we're going to be just doing the basic uh, motor data entry and that should that is uh, plenty enough and sufficient enough for the drive to have run uh, as, as sufficient it can be so uh, first thing we're going to do we there's a couple of ways to do it again so but we're going to be doing the, the uh, we're going to go straight to parameters and go straight to the uh, to the uh, 400 parameter which is going to be looking for a voltage 230 here in UK perfect then you're going to have to enter the motor current which is going to be working as your overload as well so uh, that is a uh, at a 1.1 kilowatt for me pointing uh, 18 and uh, point 19 18 19 slash uh, motor then is the RPM on 1395 for me then is a the motor frequency and then is the kilowatt rating. That's how they do it in this drive, which is the first. I've never seen that done. Usually you edit that data by just 
uh, adjust the numbers, but in here you select the group and my drive falls in the group one. So that's what we go in here. And uh, no, 406, you know, you can touch it. And the last one, oh, we, 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 it's, not it's sort of not necessary, but I like entering as well because it gives, it gives, the, gives the driver to understand what's going on in the motor, which is the cost sign, which is the power factor, which you can find on all the motor data plates, at least here in UK, that is on there. And in my case, it's 0 0.68, quite low, but it is what it is. So uh, that's it. That's what we need for the motor uh, motor to run uh, uh, as, uh, as efficient as it can run. So uh, the next thing, what we're going to do, I quickly show you, if you go to the basic parameters, you can again do that in a, in a, in a parameters in there, but that, this is the quicker way to get it. So if you can see down there, the, the 133 will be a low frequency. This is the lowest the driver uh, motor will go, and this is going to be your upper frequency in here. So uh, do check them out as well. So obviously, and then I showed you before the uh, acceleration, and this is the acceleration. So the, you can access that quickly once you are in the basic parameters, and that will be it. And your drive is pretty much ready to go. And the only thing is left is let's try it out. So uh, let's start it. Looks like the switching frequency is very smooth. I like it. Uh, as, a, as a base, that's pretty good. So there we go. You adjust the speed by up and down buttons. That's for the local run. Obviously, that'll be for that. And uh, then you've got a jog button in here, which is set at 5 hertz. And in here, you can say, obviously, that uh, local and remote. And if you are in uh, start mode, you can uh, go forwards or you can go backwards. Pretty cool, I like it. And that will do, ladies and gentlemen, for this drive's introduction and uh, basic commissioning. Uh, in the next video, we're gonna be looking at a lot more into a uh, remote control. We're gonna be using potentiometer, two or three wire controls, and so on. So that will be it, ladies and gentlemen. If you liked the video, please smash that like. If you didn't, dislike, subscribe for more, and uh, not click that notification button if you uh, wish to be notified when our new uploads are coming, as we are trying to upload as much as we can because we got so much content that we want to produce. So other than that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you in the next video.